Hello everyone, hope everyone's doing good today. Today we're going to be looking at the Waterman Graduate uh, Entry Level Fountain Pen by Waterman. So before we look at the pen, uh, which is this, let's take a look at the box that it came with. Literally nothing in the box. Uh, you have an outer cover and an inner cover with the Waterman branding. And probably the interesting thing about the, the box is uh, you can see the model number down here. This is actually the chrome finish. And even though it's called the graduate where I bought it, it actually says on the box um, Allure. So maybe that's a double name for this pen. It's distributed by Newell all across the world in France, UK and the US and the pen is made in China. So looking at the pen itself, it's a kind of a flat tipped on both sides. You have a matte plastic uh, end, kind of the end of the barrel down here. You get a shiny chrome vinyl area on the cap, uh, which is nice. And on the clip, you get the Waterman logo. You get kind of a cutout down here on the clip. Um, the clip is springy. I think the way that they achieve the springiness is purely using this piece of uh, metal down here to kind of achieve that effect. You also get the word Waterman at the bottom of the cap. And that's the extent of the branding that I can see besides the nib, which we'll get to later on. Uh, it is a snap cap, right, and it snaps and closes pretty securely. You can post it as well. And because the inside of the cap is plastic, it posts very securely. You get the friction um, that kind of holds it in place. The pen itself, uncapped, is about 124 uh, millimeters, which kind of is the borderline of what I would consider uh, a pen uh, to be used without posting it. And inside you get the barrel, pretty, you know, unadorned barrel. The whole pen is in brushed, um, I guess it's aluminum. And you get plastic threads on the section or the grip area, and you get plastic threads inside the, the barrel as well. The pen came with um, like a, a cartridge, as you can see down here. It's a pretty big cartridge. I've used half of the ink. I'm not sure whether you can make it out uh, against the black background. To be noted that you can also use an international converter um, with this pen. However, it's, it's nice that Waterman gave such a big cartridge, you know. It's like double the size of this converter at least. So I'll just put the cartridge back and let's take a look at the, first of all, the grip section. So the grip section, there's quite a lot of uh, space for you to kind of, if you are one of those people who likes to hold it further back, you, you are able to do so, or if you can hold it really close, uh, which is nice that they gave this distance down here or this space down here. Uh, the section itself is made of plastic and it's, I wouldn't say it's super thick. I measured it uh, earlier on and it's roughly, it's between nine to 10 millimeters in terms of uh, diameter, depending on where, where you grip down here, which is, puts it in the middle of the road. It's not super thick. My preferred section diameter is, is around the 11 millimeter. Um, dimension and there's a little groove down here and then you have the actual nib so the nib it says Waterman and as you can see it says F which stands for fine feet wise it's just a typical plastic feet and looking at the nib you can see that the the fine here is um, you know kind of adequately fine. 
I happen to have uh, my, you know, metropolitan slash cocoon down here. And you can see that uh, there's a little bit of inspiration, probably from Waterman, um, that they took from the Metropolitan nib. However, you, you can clearly see that the Metropolitan nib is definitely finer than the, the Waterman graduate. The two pens are quite similar dimension wise with the Metropolitan or the Cocoon being slightly longer. So that's apt to kind of compare these two pens because they're priced quite similarly. So let's do a little bit of writing. Sorry, I dropped the box. So I think I will um, post the pen uh, today. So this is the, it's a bit of a dry start. I think it's, it's also called the Allure and it's in fine and there's definitely some sort of Waterman ink in there, right? Perhaps Serenity Blue or something like that. So the nib is, is smooth. It's not scratchy at all. Um, it's not the softest nib out there. Um, and you, it's pretty hard. So, I mean, you can't, even though I'm pressing down really hard, you can't actually get much variation. Um, but it's a decent nib. The interesting thing about this nib is when I inked it up straight from the cartridge, it was very quick to kind of uh, fill up the feet, right? So um, could be because of the ink that they use. We all know that Waterman inks are pretty uh, nice and wet, wet ink flow. So that was the very quick look of the Waterman graduate. Um, in all, um, I think it's a decent pen. The reason why I bought this is because um, they happen to have a sale of some sort and it was priced pretty attractively and I wanted to try out a Waterman. I have never had a Waterman before. Um, I'm not too sure I would pay much more than the, uh, you know, the price that I paid for it, which was uh, around that uh, 15 to $20 US mark. Um, for a pen that's targeted at the, the beginner, I think it's it's okay value, right? Um, you can fit international converters in it, and it comes with a lot, nice big cartridge to kind of get you started off. Um, and it's a nice alternative to um, the Metropolitan, like I said. Would I choose this over the, the Metropolitan? My take on it after trying it out for the last few weeks um, I would say no, I would say the Metropolitan is the better pen. But it's nice to try out other brands to kind of get a feel of the market um, for this um, lower end of the market for fountain pens. So that concludes the video today. Let me know your thoughts, especially if you've had, uh, if you have the same pen or you have other Watermans that you might want to kind of suggest that I try out and um, I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.